Ah, dudes. So, I mean, it is Thanksgiving, but this Remembering Forgotten Memories episode is not a Thanksgiving story, since I'm not sure if I really have any that fit the bill. I probably should have saved the stuffing story for today, even though that didn't happen on Thanksgiving either, but whatever. I, I actually asked one of my viewers if I should hold on to this one till next week or just post it today. They said post it today, so I'm gonna post it today. Especially since I was just evicted from the kitchen from uh, not being helpful enough and uh, from wanting to listen to Jingle Cats, so... <laughs> I think we lasted all of two and a half songs before Kimberly was ready to kill me, so... <laughs> but today's story is nothing about Jingle Cats or Thanksgiving. It is about the time that I ghost wrote a radio program in my teens. Well, I should- I don't know if program is really the right term to use here. It was like a little five to ten minute segment daily, but back in the- I should really close that door so it's less distracting. Okay, so back in the like late 90s, one of the local classic rock stations here, there was like two big ones, but like one of them had Steven Seaweed on it, who has since retired, sadly, I really liked him, um, but he would like at five o'clock every afternoon, he would do this five to ten minute long Beatles segment where it'd be like a this day in history kind of deal, and he would tell like a short story about that thing, and then play a related song to go along with it. I loved it, obviously, being a Beatles fan from pretty much birth onwards, but also being the little nitpicky thing that I was even as a child. <laughs> I was that person who would call in pretty much literally daily, like no joke, daily, to nitpick the teeniest tiniest of details that would be inevitably off, or to add further detail that he hadn't included because I felt like it was a travesty to not include such and such a detail, I would like literally call the station and get a hold of him and keep calling until I got a hold of him to correct what I thought was like a grave error in judgment and in information and if you're going to spread information about the Beatles you may as well do it right. I was all of like 12, <laughs> I think, uh, so he could tell by my voice that you sound awfully young to be so sure of yourself. I was like, yeah, but here's my references and da 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 where I found this information and you are wrong, sir. This is the right information. You have me on the air going off about it because he thought it was hilarious, but he also was the first to admit when he was wrong on things too, so... <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was just so funny though, and I was just smug as hell over this because I'm right, you're wrong, and I know I'm right, and you're wrong, and I'm not gonna give this up until you admit that I'm right, and you're wrong, on the air. I kind of went full Karen mode on it, <laughs> to be honest, even though that was not a term yet back in those days, but uh, eventually, after about a year and a half of my daily harassment. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't block my damn number, although even if he had, I had an alternate number I could have called from because I was a spoiled child. Um, he finally asked me, although I think by that point, I had like half and half moved from alternating phone calls and emails when I had like a whole lot to say and a lot of info to correct, I would like email it. So eventually he emailed back one day and he was like, you know what? How about you just write my scripts for me? Just write exactly what you want me to say and I'll just do the thing. And I thought he was joking, but I was like, sure, I'd be glad to. I don't think he was expecting that. I think he thought he was being sarcastic. He wasn't expecting me to take him seriously. He was like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll try you out. I was like, cool, so you give me the general gist of what you want to talk about. You give me your topic for the day, in the morning, I'll have it back to you before I leave for school, <laughs> and you can have it ready to go by 5 p.m. and record your thing. <laughs> Done. Because for me, that was easy shit. I could pop one of those off in like 20 minutes. No big deal. <laughs> and so I did, and he was like, actually, this is really good. I was like, I know. So this just became an ongoing thing for years, where he just used me to co or to ghostwrite his stuff. Did I get a credit? No. Did I get paid? 
No, but I had the satisfaction of having the creative control of what was being said on the air and knowing that it was factually correct and giving references to every single thing. He wouldn't read the references on the air, but just so he knew that I wasn't talking out my ass. Here's the references. Here you go. <laughs> so, uh, it's a shame that San Francisco's as far as it was, because if it had been a little closer... I had been offered an internship at that radio station. He was going to take me under his wing and basically train me to be a DJ. My dad was not willing to drive an hour both ways <laughs> twice a day to bring me there and drive me home. Especially since I wasn't even old enough to really be working yet officially and was still very much in school. <laughs> Although by the time I was offered the internship, I think I was about 14 or 15 by then. But... Regardless, my dad nixed that, so it never got to happen, which is a shame, because I feel like I would have done a really great job with something like that. Uh, and back in the days before Clear Channel 1 took over all the radio stations and gave them their library of stuff that they can play, and you can't really stray from that, I would have had so much fun doing, like, deep cuts and stuff that, like, nobody really thinks about. I would have had so much fun doing that, but did not pan out. But at least I can say that I ghost wrote that Beatles segment for a few years. So, it's a lot of fun, and I had a lot of personal fulfillment out of it. So, <laughs> anyways, that's it. I don't know why I was just thinking about that again not that long ago, but I was. I was thinking about Steven Seaweed again. I should try to find his contact info and, like, email him or something, say hi, see if he still remembers me this many years later. I know that, like, several years after that, he always did, like, the, uh, the, like, I almost said stations, the booths at different concerts for classic rock shows and a couple of the Who shows that I went to, he had a booth at right inside the door. And back in those days, before the days of social media... And before it was as common to have, like, the little, like, headshot pictures on the websites for all the DJs. I had no idea what he looked like. I just knew him by voice. So I had my own very vivid image in my head of what I thought he looked like. And then I found out in person, on the spot, what he looked like, and was just like, Nope! And I kept on walking, which is really shitty in hindsight, but 17-year-old me did not have the best of judgment. In hindsight, I really wish I would have gone up and said hi, because at that point, he would have most definitely remembered me back then. But, anyways. <laughs> okay, so that is it for this story. So, anyways, that's it for this one. So, as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Etsy, everything in Lawrence all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it and get your name on the end card for a month from the time of donating, uh, the donation link, as always, is down in the description, too. Anyway, guys, till next time, see ya.